Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on Cyre Philosophia. Um, so in this video I'll discuss uh, the theory of creationism, evolution, and the Big Bang, and it will be an overview of the arguments between, uh, well the famous argument between creationism and evolution as fundamental posited theories of the universe. It will also compare the two, between the two, um, for the validity and credibility of the theories. My ultimate aim is to show that they're logically equivalent in their validity. So creationism and the Big Bang Theory are equivalent in their vali validity to be used as um, theories of the universe. Uh, so creationism and evolution has been present for over 150 years now. Um, Charles Darwin, uh, in conjunction with uh, Alfred Wallace, um, from their observations of animals through uh, logical interpretation and uh, observation uh, actually like observing animals and seeing the different qualities that they have um, this theory of evolution that came to be was first publicly and widely proposed um, in 1858 with Charles Darwin's famous book on the origin of species this book at the time was delayed to be published because the reigning theory at the time was a theory of creationism and which the church had a, a, a stronger foothold on they, they had more power than they do now and to say that creationism was wrong and evolution was the actual theory was kind of like heresy. Advances and refinements in science and this theory uh, it got swallowed up into into science. Uh, science kind of uh, uses this as their main foothold for the theories of, of the universe and evolved into the evolutionary theory that we have today, the, the Big Bang, which is the current reigning theory. Um, and it is quite young. It's under 100 years old, this theory, while other theories like creationism has been around for thousands of years. Um, uh, we can say creationism, creationism is like the old sage of theories. Uh, or at least I like to refer to it as that. Uh, but even so, the Big Bang as it stands now is a young theory, but it does pull its roots from the ancient Greek philosophers. Um, for instance, much of science and the Big Bang relies on the atomic theory, which was first purported by uh, some of these ancient Greeks. Uh, it also relies on cosmologies that the ancient Greeks have uh, brought forth. Um, a cosmology is, well, if you break down the word cosmos, universe, and alogia, which is basically knowledge or discourse. Um, so a cosmology can roughly be translated as a story of the universe's creation or a story from the beginning. So an example of a cosmology is uh, a famous one, Plato's Divine Craftsman, um, who in his book The Timaeus, uh, he describes the universe's creation as uh, an intelligent craftsman who uses a uh, a model, a perfect model of the universe and takes this um, 
pre-existing matter. Uh, so you have this matter that's not intelligent and you have an intelligent thing that takes the matter and forms it based on its properties using the model into the perfect universe that we have now. Um, that's that's a very crude representation of it, but that's that's the theory. And a less accepted and much weirder example of a cosmology is, is em Empedocles' cosmology. He believed the universe was composed of six basic things. Um, you have earth, air, fire, water, so the basic elements. Um, and you also have love and strife. So there's six basic components to the world. And these components assemble and disassemble in in repeating cycles so you have cycles of love where everything comes together you make the universe humans everything's good and strife which overtakes love at some point and deconstructs everything back into the six basic earth air fire water love and strife where nothing exists and this happens over and over um so that one's a little bit weird and a bit hard to swallow but uh um, so, during the creation of life, during the love overpowering phase, um, it's random assemblies of these six basic components that just come together in different ways over and over to produce eventually favor fi favorable combinations, um, which creates a human, as you see now. I won't go into too much detail, um, but it's really interesting to read up on, even though it is generally now disproven and not accepted. So, but one one um, one thing that we pull from Empedocles' cosmology, it leads to what we call now the infinite monkey theorem, which states that if you have an infinite amount of monkeys typing on an infinite amount of typewriters pressing random keys for an infinite amount of time you they will be able to type up every written work in human history um, so as an as an example including your copy of Fifty Shades of Grey <laughs> um, so we'll come back to that later uh, but for now I'm just going to give a crude representation of creationism and evolution. Mm -hmm. So creationism, uh, summed into one sentence, basically says an intelligent and all-powerful being created the universe and all life in seven days. All life was present from the beginning as a mature form of life, so trees, sheep, cattle. Adam, the first human, existed as a fully formed being. Uh, so he kind of just, uh, I don't like to do this, but a crude representation. He snapped his fingers and it was made. It was there. Uh, now, now, as for evolutionary theory, so evolutionary theory crudely is there is an unintelligent singularity that once existed at a point or it, it, it eternally existed uh, and a singularity spontaneously something happened within it and it exploded outward and the energy and particles just start to disperse outward um, which we say still is dispersing the energy is still going outward so eventually these energies and particles these fundamental first particles combined together to form more and more refined molecules they became more and more complex and more stable together um, based on, on the laws of them until they became more and more complex until we got our primordial soup which is the basis for our evolution
which is basically um, a soup of proteins, RNA, and other elements um, that fundamentally created the DNA and life forms that started to ex first exist and then which became more and more complex over millions of years until we finally got the homo species or humans. So this is really a crude representation of these theories. Um, so I'm not here to teach these theories uh, as they are. You can, you can look them up or take a course on them. But my point here is to just compare their validity in the context of their usefulness to describe the origins of the universe. Now, these theories are founded on, on different premises. And premises are just statements that are taken as evidence to support the conclusion. So creationism relies on the idea that an intelligent and all-powerful being, or God, eternally existed. So he just always was, always is. That's the one premise. Creationism also relies on evidence from the Bible, what the Bible says, um, and the Bible being an anthology or collection of scripture that witness that this God is real, it contains laws, um, statements about the truth and reality of the universe. So evolution itself is founded on an educated guess that the regularities and laws that we see in the world apply to a universe or place or state of existence that existed over 13 billion years ago. So it's basically a refined guesstimate that this singularity existed back then. Evolution also relies on empirical evidence or evidence that can be known through the senses that paves the way for these guesstimates about times and places that we have never been able to empirically verify, analyze, or um, know as true empirically. So in essence, it's making a guess about then, from now, based on different laws, regularities, and logical assumptions. Who here do we here give the credit to? Do we believe that there is once an internally existing dense ball of particles that spontaneously destabilized after an eternal amount of time and exploded outward? And from that, random combinations produced very complex entities, life beings, or do we believe in an eternally existing all-powerful and conscious being that created the world in seven days? That is basically what creationism is. Before we can give the point to either side, we need to look into the facts. Uh, so we'll start with creationism. Creationism is supported in large part by the Bible, religious intuition, eyewitness testimony, and miracles. And all of these are supported by faith. But we know facts show that the Bible is not to be taken literally, since messages in the Bible themselves are cryptic and abstract. They can be interpreted in many different ways, as has been shown with many different arguments over the ages. There's still not consensus on everything in the Bible, so that is... Uh, there's multiple translations of the Bible that exist, and with each translation we lose the original message. We have to filter it through the filter of translation. Furthermore, there's thousands of different interpretations and translations of the Bible. It was first uh, written in Hebrew, then translated to Greek, then to English. So we have um, 
I think the Old Testament was written in Aramaic, New Testament was written in Hebrew and Greek. Um, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> anyway, the point here is that um, we have multiple translations and so we lose some of the original message. Um, so religious intuition obviously can and is explained away as delusions or hallucinations. Um, psychology can easily um, you know, explain this away. Uh, it is not really good evidence, it's subjective. Eyewitness testimony, especially second-handed testimony, um, stuff from the Bible that is quoted, so we're filtering through that, is generally not good evidence. Faith itself, faith is what religion relies on, and this is an abductive line of reasoning. So abductive line of, line of reasoning is when you jump from evidence to a conclusion that doesn't necessarily follow the evidence, but is very plausible in light of the evidence. So it's not sound, as in logic, sound is something that can't be false. It's likely. Uh, so abductive reasoning is a likely reasoning. And ultimately, faith relies on unproven argument. So this isn't looking good for creationism. If we move on to science now, science is a set of dogma derived from the examination and study of regularities in the world. And it relies on inductive reasoning. So this inductive reasoning says that, for example, since the sun has risen every morning for the last few thousand years it's going to rise tomorrow morning and we can predict this with uh, to within seconds of when it's supposed to so it's a very regular process um, at, at base inductive reasoning is you make a set of observations you say in instance x we see y in instance x we see y in instance x we see y and you make a prediction for the future in instance x at that we haven't observed yet, we will see why. I, I want to make the point here that this also isn't a necessary, it doesn't necessarily follow. So just like abductive reasoning, it's not a sound argument. Get back to more on this um, problem of inductive reasoning soon. Um, so science as Husserl shows in his Cartesian meditations, also relies on an, uh, an assumption that our empirical examination of the world correlates one to one with what it really is. So, what I sense, I'm sensing that I have a hand here, meaning that there is in reality a hand here. Now this isn't very an intuitive, it, it takes a little bit of thinking about this. You might think, well there's obviously a hand there, you can see it, you can touch it. Um, it's a lot more philosophy and complex than that, but it, it also relies on another assumption that there exists out there a world to begin with, a physical reality, uh, a thing that can be known. So first we can argue against this inductive reasoning. Um, inductive reasoning, as David Hume, the popular um, philosopher in his problem of induction, shows that induction isn't certainty. Um, so for the sun rising with certainty every morning, we can show that, or we, we can argue that Tomor perhaps tomorrow is the beginning of a new cosmic cycle where the sun changes its pattern we don't know or perhaps there's a divine god out there that uh, points his finger and it doesn't rise tomorrow you know this all this 
can happen so um, and the other popular example is you know, if you go out in the world you observe swans you know white swan white swan white swan white swan white swan there's no black swans so we say there's no black swans but that doesn't mean that there isn't a black swan out there and we can also argue that empirical evidence is often subjective you know all empirical stimulus passes through the senses and is ultimately subjectively interpreted and perceived and we know that it's impossible to remain 100% objective finally those two assumptions uh, the assumption that what we observe is what is actually out there and that there is actually a world out there that science is founded on so this is the the foundation is unproven we can't prove we haven't proven that what we're experiencing is, is the actual reality out there and we can't prove that we're not a brain in a vat as the popular example goes I also believe that we will never be able to prove these two assumptions that science relies on or disprove it. It's just one of those things that is a question that our limited minds cannot comprehend. So one thing we can draw from this examination is that both creationism and science rely at their foundation on unproven assumptions. Creationism relies on the assumption that there exists an intelligent God out there and as I have just said science relies on the assumption that our examination of the world correlates one-to-one -one how it is and what we are and that there actually is a world out there. We can further imply from this that science is having faith that these assumptions are true so science is like a faith you need to have faith in science because it's it's an unproven method of inquiry it's it's not a necessary truth just like God isn't a necessary truth so here religion faith in creationism faith in science faith is the foundation for these these two theories it, it has faith that inductive reasoning is is a, a, a way of characterizing the world and since they both fundamentally rely on faith uh, creationism relies on the God to be intelligent and benevolent creator creator well, science reveres their God, as I'm using as an, an analogy, that this unintelligent singularity at some point pushes energy outward. So um, here I'm making the analogy between um, the faith that we have in the source of the universe as a God. So for science, their God is this unintelligent singularity. So both ways of having faith on the creation of the universe are equal. Faith, they're both relying on faith. That's equal. That's an equal way of relying on the theory. And so it really doesn't matter which one we choose logically. They're both founded on faith. They're both unproven. They're both unsound theories. So logically, flip a coin, choose one. That's basically the equivalent. That's how likely they are to be true. One note here is I'm not shaming science as being useless. It's useful in our human world for producing things based on observations of laws and regularities. Uh, we've, we have concrete and tangible things that's given us medicine, technology, a lot of 
different things. So what I am implying here is that to use science to, pur to purport a story of the creation of the universe is a failed endeavor. Also, keep in mind there's more theories than just creationism and evolution. So just this morning I read a new scientific theory that posits the universe has always been eternally existing and expanding. So instead of a singularity existing and boom, it's just always been expanding and it's always just been there like that. No singularity. Um, and this, since it falls under a scientific theory, it also has the same problems as a scientific theory. So that's the end of my argument for the logical equivalence of creationism and evolution. They're both founded on faith. So if you want to leave now, that's the crux of the argument. But now I'm going to further share on which theory I side with. So I, I do believe in creationism. I think creationism is a more plausible way of characterizing the world. It's more probable to me. Um, I think it's more plausible there's an intelligent designer out there. Using science, it shows us how complex and coordinated the universe is. Even just... Like I, I, I have a university degree in biochemistry and just knowing the biochemistry inside of us and how everything interacts and you know we get energy external energy and it powers all that that is it's so fine-tuned and there's so many things interacting variables and it's just we don't understand it all one scientist in their lifetime understands maybe one protein and there's thousands of proteins in our body thousands of pathways you might understand one pathway one person one pathway it's astounding to how complex and it's just it's it's mind-boggling so um, I think that for this to come by chance you know just random coming together um, which is like one in an infinite amount of chance to have the world and the universe we have now. It's hard for me to swallow. It's hard for me to swallow. Though I don't say it's no, it's impossible. It is possible. It's just I don't think that it's it's too it's too not possible. And science relies on the infinite monkey theorem that I, I explained earlier in the way that it says for what we have now through evolution it was the random coming together of these particles into different conformations and randomly found a stable conf conformation of atoms which atoms together make molecules it, it, to me that's like the infinite monkey theorem you know uh, let's say there's an infinite amount of particles out there over an infinite amount of time well even even then it's it's a reduced amount of time it's only 13 billion years I believe so for the chance for that to occur from just randomly interacting energies and particles it's it's hard to swallow um, so how could random combinations come to produce the qualitative experiences that we have of a beautiful sunset songbirds or the elation one experiences from from an orchestra why would a random coming together of particles produce 
when I look at a sunset, it's beautiful. It's it gives me experiences that subjective experiences that is not you can't explain. It's it's a qualitative experience and it's not necessary that this would have arisen. We can say it arose through chance. Um but you know, to have beautiful visual sites, have beautiful uh, auditory, like listening to songbirds, uh, the the bow across across a cello. It's 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 too beautiful. It's there. There has to be a purpose behind things are the way they are. So nature is too coordinated, complex, beautiful to have just come together, chanceably. Um, even even if this was over a dozen a billion years and further what I do believe is that the Big Bang that science purports and calculated is the result of God's touching our universe so the point he expends the energy the point he creates the universe is the singularity that science calculates. And when he expends this energy, it goes outwards and produces everything that we see. So if you got this far, I thank you for watching this whole video. Um, Thank you for your attention and uh, your watching of this video, this whole boring or hopefully interesting 35 minutes. Um, if you're interested in this type of content, uh, me philosophizing about the nature of this mysterious universe, um, you can subscribe or just, if you don't like subscribing, check back often for more video logs. Um, so. Just stay curious and open-minded and, you know, always seek, seek knowledge. Cheers.